rugby and he commutes. Oh, we're live, Sam. I've just pressed oh, it. Oh, God, we're live. Talking rubbish. Uh, what are we on? Are <laughs> <laughs> we on YouTube or Facebook? I don't expect know. It, oh, this got those first few minutes out of the pub. Just oh, haven't poured my beer yet. <laughs> Go. Oh, and, uh, hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 262 of the 77 Club. And it seems that um, our streaming platform is having an absolute nightmare. Um, so we don't know whether we're live on YouTube or Facebook or, or what's happened. I changed my Facebook password, instantly forgot it. Um, but we're here now, Harry. Um, let's start off with the socials that are working. Yeah, don't use StreamYard. No, I'm joking. I think there's been an issue of YouTube, but we are the Wall 77 Club on there. And I think we are live on YouTube. Uh, Facebook, the Wall 77 Club, Instagram, at 77 Club Podcast on Twitter. We're also on Spotify, on all like the lizard platforms like Mark Zuckerberg, uh, you know, made all them ones. Uh, Dan Bayliss is here. Hello. And Jack Williams. Hi, everybody. And yes, we are, it seems, uh, live on YouTube, according to James, Stephen, Neil, Ray, etc. So um, thank you for confirming. Um, Harry, we start with West Ham at home. We were a little bit help, uh, hopeful when this one um, sort of came around. Uh, it was a big opportunity. Uh, three points would have made a hell of a difference. Uh, we went away with nothing in very, very controversial circumstances. Yeah, and again, I think Jack predicted a loss, but it doesn't tell the full story, does it? Because we were quite down in our predictions, if I remember. I think a few of us said draws. But the team selection, I secretly really liked it because I'm a bit fed up of the experiment of playing the youth players. I I'm, I'm don't mind Shuorn and Nori and Sarabia up front and having the three. I know Doyle was kind of drifting left anyway, so it was kind of like a 5-2-3 at times. Uh, going forward, but first off, I thought we were absolutely fantastic. I thought we controlled the game. It would have been nice to have probably got another goal. Um, but then second half, it was night and day, wasn't it? West Ham were the much better team, made a few substitutions, and Antonio in particular made a lot of problems for us. We kind of were the enemies of our own downfall, really. You know, we, we just, I don't know what we were doing, to be honest, especially on the one lean up to the handball, just giving the ball away. I thought Doc struggled. And yeah, um, I mean, I was walking. I was like almost out the door and I was watching it on the telly when Kilman put the ball in the net. And I was like, oh, great, 2 2. We don't really deserve it on the second half performance. And I sent a quick replay of the goal. Couldn't believe that it got ruled out. And it weren't until we got to the pub and that after I realized how bad it actually was. And again, I know we're going to get onto it in a bit with VAR and how many times we've been absolutely shafted by it and how crap the officials are. But they've literally, they have ended our season. Uh, the officials, that's us done in our chase for Europe and a draw would have got us a glimmer of hope, a little bit of hope, but uh, the officials and PGO, OMOL, however you say who they are, have ruined our season. I'm quite frankly, I'm fed up with it. Um, Bayliss, I'll bring you in there. I think David Moyes said after the game, it was almost like the players had swapped shirts at half-time given the poor first half and the, and the great first half that we had had. Um, and then just to to lose it in that fashion, um, but like Harry says, it it was a everything was going so well. Yeah, I don't think we did enough to put the game to bed when we were so dominant in the first half. Fair enough, we haven't got any forwards. Um, West Ham were much better second half. I can't bother to talk about VAR. It's just. It has ruined the You're game. Wrong the podcast. Podcast. Wrong podcast. I know. I know. It's, it's in the it's title. Like, <laughs> I know. It's just, it's ruined the game, hasn't it? I think, is it Antonio's podcast that came out and said, I'd rather just not have it. And that's what we've been saying for ages. I'd rather them have a howler every few weeks than this every week. Because under the letter of the law, I can see why they've said that's offside. But it's also absolutely ridiculous because the keeper's never going to save it. The bit the ref looked at was just a screenshot rather than actually seeing the play. And it's just, it's a farce. It's an absolute farce. And, you know, we were talking about the conspiracy of it all being set up to help bigger teams do better. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what it's fucking doing. <laughs> like, it's, it's continually done it and it's proven our point right over the last 18 months. So, I don't know. Uh, Jack, I just don't get. Bring you in then. Um, deep breath holding the VAR call for a, for a second just like I was really pleased with the first half I think everybody was it was quite refreshing to actually just have 11 senior players pa playing on the pitch and I was quite 
you know, impressed and just, you know, surprised at how how well it went and how well we played. But the one thing I said at half time is there's no way West Ham are going to come out for this second half and be that bad again. We knew they were going to up their game and we just weren't really prepared for it. And I think, again, it comes back to squad numbers because although we had 11 senior players playing, there's just such a lack of options available on the bench. And they ran themselves into the ground again. They have been doing it for weeks. We're missing key players at the back, like Dawson, who's like a level head, and like all our forward players. And it's showing. It's showing. And obviously, as soon as really Eight Nori went down injured, you know, he's he's been our main man, really. And so much has been going through him that, you know, it, we were asking for it. So I, I don't want to blame the players too much because I think what we're seeing here is just coming out the blocks doing really, really well. And they're losing the legs because, you know, they're having to play so many minutes with very limited rotation and limited backup. And most big clubs, whether it be Villa the other week or West Ham, you know, the weekend just gone. You look at their bench and they can change a game. And you look at ours and it just can't at the moment. And that's just, it's not, not helpful in, in Premier League football. And it's a silly equalising goal. I know, I, I don't know what Kilman's doing to stick his hand out. I think it was handball. I think it's fair enough. I'll, I'll give Jose Sarr the benefit of the doubt for the corner because it's windy and he's, been really good lately so I'm going to give him a little pass on this because he's kept us in game so much but you know it's a bit dodgy isn't it so um all in all before we talk about VAR based on the second half performance we deserve to lose that I, I, I'm not, I don't have a complaint about the result if it finished at 2-1 and the whistle blown before Kilman's header I'd say you know it's our own fault fair enough blah 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 however when we're given a lifeline at the last minute in what is, you know, a really crucial point for us, because the way it shapes up with the table, I know we've got a game in hand on West Ham, but the difference between just staying the same amount of points, you know, apart from each other and them having three points on us is massive when you've got only look, seven or eight games left. It really is big and it makes a massive difference. And I just can't really recall goals like that in football where it's a corner, it's headed in from close range ever being ruled out and it throws up a lot of questions and one, one of the things that surprises me is particularly from the people watching it is the fans reaction straight away is a lot of people didn't quite get like how it could be offside in the first place which I, I understand it's because you think you can't be offside at a corner which is right you can't from the actual kick of the corner but you can be offside as basically from the, the moment the ball is played forward off Kilman's head so you think okay fair enough you can technically be offside in that situation for that Half a second it takes from Kilman's the ball to come off Kilman's head and to go into the goal. In order to then rule that goal out for offside, you have to say that in that half a second moment, that you know our player is impeding the keeper so much that it's affected his positioning and his ability to save that ball going into that net. And Fabianski is planted to the ground. He doesn't know what's going on. It's nothing to do with the fact of line of sight or height. He's chosen his position. He's chosen where he wants to stand. He hasn't moved over. He's made no attempt to dive to the ball, which he can see. If you look, he's not. He, our player isn't like permanently stood in front of the keeper. He just runs forward slightly when you know when the, when the ball is whipped in. So he's got visibility to that ball all the way. And in order to rule that out for offside, you have to say that our player is active in that moment and interfering with play. And he's neither of those things because he's getting nowhere near that ball anyway. It's just, it's completely ridiculous. And then the problem is, obviously, the, we've said before about the morons who, you know, are sat there in, in their Stocky Park studio and nobody, no, none of the players on the pitch, none of the West Ham keeper, the West Ham manager, West Ham fans, nobody appealed for anything there. None of the refs spotted it, none of the fans spotted it in the stands, none of the commentators, nobody. But some people 200, 200 miles away in a studio think they know better. I think they have to take it back. And then what you see, is after they've taken it back and for a review, is do they show the goal once to the referee in real time so you can see how quickly the ball's gone into the net? No. They show him a side-on side freeze frame and then a shot from behind the goal of basically Fabianski with his line of sight being blocked in again in like slow motion. So you're not getting a real view of actually what's going on. You're looking at that picture and you're going, oh yeah, by the letter of the law, it looks like he is impeding. But he's in no man's land. He doesn't know what's going on anyway. It's, it's just a complete joke. And whoever these people are who, you know, think they know better and think they're applying the rules of the game properly to the detriment of the game, because basically what's happening is you're killing, having fewer goals. Yes, that's an exciting mm -hmm. finish to the game, isn't it? As a neutral, yeah. oh, it's 2-2, yeah. you know, fair enough. It's an interesting, you know, last play and the Wolves have got a point, blah, 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 blah. But what's happening is you're taking away the ability of fans to celebrate goals 
and yeah. you're taking goals out the game and for, for reasons that nobody who actually is playing the game, watching the game, refereeing the game, commentating the game thinks is a goal, but but they know better. They know better because here's a, here's a slow motion fucking freeze frame. It's a joke and it's been a joke from the start. Like, is there anything, if you get in a survey of fans and honestly said, do you think VAR has been implemented well? It would be like a 95% like no across all proper football fans yeah. so that says a lot about just the incompetence of the people doing it and it's yeah it's 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 just a mess you're on mute dan i hate to sound like we're at work but sorry <laughs> jesus that's school boy um it would rule out so many headed goals in the history of football like yeah. it, well, i agree oh fucking morons they are just what? an embarrassment. The, the quote what from I Antonio don't. is, even though it's gone for me, we nicked a win because VAR is a shambles. Honestly, the player's in front of Fabianski, but that's not offside, mate. I don't think it's offside in any way, shape or form. I don't think it's a penalty either against us. I prefer for it to just go back to normal completely and usly scrap VAR because it's not helped football. Harry, I'll bring you in there. Um, obviously, the penalty was checked, but it was given on on the pitch by the referee. So, you know, that, that penalty is going to stand whether VAR is is there or not, essentially. Yeah, I, I think he was he was moaning about their header, wasn't he? Um, is it Emerson's header when he tripped up Samedo? A lot of West Ham fans were unhappy with that one being given, but concentrating on ours, the, what, the one thing that really disappointed me the most about it was the fact that the referee ran over to the monitor and then changed his mind. Like, I think he, he bottled it. He completely yeah, yeah. bottled it because he just wanted to keep Stockley Park boys happy because they're all in this little club and he didn't want to upset people who are probably above him or his colleagues. So that's what really got my goat is that if he watched that clip or if he just saw, I haven't actually seen what he saw, to be honest, but if he just saw the freeze frame, give him a little bit of slack, like Jack said, freezing it for that split second he stood in front of Fabianski. But if you watch the actual clip, as Jack said, he's like kind of moving to the left in like a motion. And Fabianski's got, and that's the thing, he's got no chance at all what, anyway, even if no one stood there. And he hasn't impeded his view. And Fabianski himself has even said it should be a goal. So it's an absolute disgrace. Um, I just want to touch on the Jose Sarr thing as well, because I know a lot of this is going to be about VAR before we move on. But that corner from Ward Prowse, Jose Sarr can't ever be beat in that situation, in my opinion. Yes, it was windy, but. He dived, if you watch it back, he's kind of like, just like this dramatic dive, but any Premier League goalkeeper should be tipping that over his bar, in my opinion. And I think that's an absolute howler. But like Jack said, he kept us in the game against Burnley. But the thing is with Jose Sarr, he can have a worldy performance one game and then he'll make like two howlers in a row or almost cost us a game. And he's got to cut that out because his first season with us, when we, under Bruno Large, he was not near enough player of the season, wasn't he? He never used to make all these weird errors, but yeah, we didn't deserve it. I agree with Bayless. Um, from that second half performance, I don't think we deserve to come out with anything anyway, but it's just a kick in the teeth when, you know, we get a fair equaliser and it, it's not given. And maybe their goal should have stood their header when uh, Samedo got tripped, but that's nowhere near as, you know, as bad as what we've had go against us. And I think now we've had more points be took off us by VAR wrong decisions than Everton and Forest have had took off them by uh, being fined by, you know, FFP things. So it's just a disgrace and it makes you wonder why we even bother getting season tickets to go watch. So it just brings into question, so Stephen in the comments says, what can we do about VAR? How can fans help? Um, I know Steve also said, I've got a 400 mile round trip to Molyneux. I'll not be doing it next season if VAR is still blighting our beautiful game. I mean, Dan, what can we do? I don't think as much we can do. And I think as, as James says as well in the comments, I've never met an actual fan who goes to the matches who likes VAR, not one. And I don't think I can find a fan of, of any club, whether it's Man City or Luton or Wolves, who enjoys the experience of VAR or has not got a horror story to to tell you about VAR. I think the big clubs don't really like it. It doesn't really matter as much to them because they get more chances, they score more goals, and at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. But when it's a sort of like historically what we've been over the last few seasons is a low score inside, it, it can make a huge difference. But Stephen's question stands, you know, what can we do? I don't think we can do anything, to be honest, because this isn't for us. It's not for the people that pay their money and go to the game. It's the people that pay their 80 quid a month for Sky and BT or whatever it costs. Like it's it, This isn't for us. They don't care about 
the people that turn up and pay. If they cared, they'd give us the audio and the video on the screens in the stadiums. That that's the fact they don't do that is literally sticking two fingers up to the people that go. We are what? we are kept in the dark until I, a whistle yeah. goes. I agree with what you're saying, um, but Jack, do you think that the experience of watching it on TV or digitally is improved with VAR? Because if it's a farce inside the ground, that's for one particular reason. But like you said before, if it's stealing goals or um, killing a crescendo to a, a brilliant 90 minutes for the neutral, then that's a problem, isn't it? It's a it's a problem all around, yeah. I mean, it's not enjoyable watching it on TV most of the time because, like, say, even, even the people commentating, they don't actually know what's going on. I know it's improved a little bit because they can sort of see the, the status and see what's going on in the in the VAR room so they can keep you updated. But the people in the ground, yeah, haven't got a Scooby. And a lot of the time, the players on the pitch and the bloke on the pitch, referee in the game, haven't got a Scooby either. So you think back to some of these where it's like, you know, they've given – given decisions against us and said, oh, they're offside and Connor Cody's gone, who? And the ref goes, I don't know. But it's, <laughs> but it's just not being given. <laughs> so it's that's that's how pathetic the whole thing is. So no, I think I, I think I hate it. I just hate it all round, really. I, n- nobody has a positive thing to say about it. The thing is, we've seen it can work in certain circumstances. Bar Aston Villa, Sheffield United, that goal, the goal and technology has worked, you know, tremendously well. It's Works for like automatic offside and stuff at the World Cup. I think it worked really well. Didn't delay the game. People saw the images relatively quickly. So like, okay, yeah, fair enough. It's offside. The problem we've got is just the the people who are running it and the people in charge. And a, a good example, I think I shared it in the WhatsApp group earlier, is that the European refs, um, obviously I'm guessing they have problems with VAR as well, but the, the Saka penalty appeal last night mm-hmm. for Arsenal. Yeah. Somebody said on Twitter, right, any English ref is giving that straight away. Against 100%. Arsenal, it's, you know, golden England boy Saka's gone down. I, I think he initiated the contact himself, knew what he was doing. But, you know, the Emirates, that's getting given. He'll be surrounded by Arteta, surrounded by Declan Rice, whoever it might be. Straight away, that's a penalty. But the continental ref was like, no, he stood, stood his ground and, you know, stood by it. And until we've got people who actually have that level of bottle to actually do that, it's not going to be implemented properly because there's so much bias and so much unconscious bias that these referees have that that it's just yeah. it's going to con- continue because they're scared they're scared of the repercussions yeah. about against feedback from you know being kicked off because you did this against man united did this against chelsea whatever and you know it's it's it just makes you just think again that like we said before that this isn't at all for the fans it's not at all for clubs like wolves it's just there to keep the you know established order in tow and, you know, that's mm. that's my honest just, opinion of it now. Just on that point with that Saka penalty, if a re- pre- English Premier League referee would have given it, then VAR wouldn't have overruled it either. They'd have gone the on-field decision just because he whacked his own leg onto Neuer. And in the one in the Liverpool-Man United game, well, I think Elliot went down and you could tell he kicked uh, Wan-Bissaka's leg and went down, but VAR didn't overrule it. And we've had a few like that. The uh, Fabio Silva one at Sheffield United away, where their their player initiated the contact. Huang That's against Newcastle. Yeah, Huang. He, he, you know, their player initiated the contact and Huang was pulling out a bit like Fabio Silva. VAR, if they see any contact, they just give it. They go with the, the rules, but they don't use their common sense of the game, a bit like this offside decision. They don't use common sense, and it's ridiculous. They haven't got any. They don't. I wonder what the satisfaction numbers are as percentages in the European top leagues. Are, is there an Italian podcast sat there moaning about VAR the same way we are? Because I mm. personally think VAR can work, but it's the Premier League and their referees that are the problem. I don't. Think, what's the country? Think, what's the country that took them to court and won, and they had to replay the game? That was a European uh, league, I think it was. Oh, we can't have they, that. They had, a bad, they, they had a really bad decision. They took it to court. The court said, yep, you've got to replay that game. It's basically... I've not heard of that. Know, where, where, where was yeah, that? I've not heard yeah. of that. If you Google it, it's a, I think it's, oh, I don't know where, but it was a big story at the time. And they went to court and they won. Now, imagine that happens in the Premier League. Like Liverpool against Spurs, that offside one early on in the season. If they'd have gone, no, yeah. if we don't win the title, we're taking that to court and we want to replay that game. Because if we win, we win the league. So then it becomes absolutely crazy then. Yeah, I, I think, I think are... with the point on um, it's for the big clubs, there would then be an argument potentially that we're singing the praises of the referee in the Bayern Munich Arsenal game, 
and arguably Bayern Munich are one of the biggest clubs in Europe. Is that a decision that goes for the big teams when they're playing the lesser teams? So you you know, it just goes it goes round and round, doesn't it? I don't know. I mm. think it's hear me out on this, it might go down a bit of a rabbit hole, but that'd be unlike you. I know. So football and the powers that be that control English football have had two bits of fuckery in the last five years. It's VAR and it's FFP. And what are the two things we spend all our fucking time talking about? It's FFP and VAR. So it's clearly a bunch of morons sat in their offices in Paddington, because I know exactly where it is. A bunch of people that don't even go to the fucking football, no doubt. And they are utterly, utterly useless. They don't know what they're doing. (laughs) And it's they're like MPs, right? They're sort of, they feel like they've got to this position and they can go and do whatever they want and probably send a few pictures they shouldn't on some uh, dating apps. <laughs> and <laughs> and they get to get away with it because they run football. Magic. Pay themselves a big salary. Everyone loves our game because we're in control and we're telling you it's great. And all it is, is a bunch of corporate absolute idiots that are now ruining the game of football. And <laughs> look at it. Look at what we talk about. Look at what we spend our entire time. We're supposed to be talking about two uh, the football game that's just been and the football game that's coming up. And we're now 20 minutes in. And other than about four minutes at the start, all we've spoken about is fucking VAR. There you go. You stop swearing, Dan. <laughs> You're done. You're getting told off in the comments. The thing is, your dad thing actually is commented right. asking you to stop swearing. The <laughs> oh, thing my. is, I'm right. I'm completely Sorry, I'm, right. I'm, I'm... I'm, do, I'm eating George, don't worry. Um, do you remember how, the, sorry, sorry, do you remember how it was sold, though? Just going back to how it was originally sold. Like, this is just for clear and obvious errors. It's for the real stinkers, you know, the real obvious things. And if there's a call in a game where 30,000 people watching it don't think there's an issue, is it clear and obvious? Can it be clear and obvious if nobody thinks it's, a, 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 you know, there's anything wrong? And, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. In the, we, the real sour thing about the... Um, about the one at the weekend is just that it's just just nobody even had a sniff of it. Like it needs to go. We've said for ages on this podcast a few times it needs to be like cricket, where you only appeal for a review if you actually think there's something there, um, and then you get one review, you know, per half or whatever it might be. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how to make it better, but it can't go on like this, surely, because it's just driving people away from the games. Totally agree. Um, let's do something that Harry wanted to do, which was your top five VAR moments. Um, put your favourite one in the comments. Um, it was, it was, it was me actually. I, I started thinking yeah, about this in the week. Yeah, worst VAR moments. So, 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 Jack, what, get your list out. Basically, what I started thinking was because obviously we talk about VAR so much, so much at the start of this season in particular. We had had a few, we had a few weeks off, hadn't we? Really, it'd been been okay. We'd had some actually refereeing performances which we actually gave some credit to which is was a a nice few weeks holiday but it sort of got me thinking since it's came in what are the five worst ones that we've had go against us not against anyone in the whole league but the five ones that have gone against Wolves I've written a few down here but I think I've got four out of the five but I'd like some help from um you know the people in the comments and you guys to try and make a definitive list of five because I will have forgotten something um so shall I read them off or do you want to guess what's on my list? Can I can I number one has got to be the Liverpool FA Cup goal? Where oh, the, the camera VAR didn't work and they didn't know the camera angle. That was the, the Liverpool uh, Cup offside is definitely on there, yes, because obviously that is just one where it screams corruption in the fact that you've <laughs> you've given an offside and you go to review it, the cameras don't work. And so you say, well, we better just assume it's offside then rather than giving us the benefit of the doubt and saying it's onside. It's the complete opposite of what you should do. It's like, there's no evidence here to say that this what was was offside. So what should we do? Because it's Liverpool, let's just assume that it was just in case. That's, and he was that's, on. That's, that's, and he was yeah. on. TV By companies could see he was on. But, yeah. you know, they, they pulled the plug on the camera, basically. So that that is... Remember? I think that's Remember top, BN Sports, ones, Jack? Yeah. BN Sports, the foreign yeah. channel, had like infrared. They had like an yeah. infrared offside system and he was like miles on. So that's like, that went viral at the time. So the official VAR cameras from a one of the most well-known football grounds in the world couldn't have an angle of the bottom left corner of the pitch to decide who was offside. And that was another case of who was offside. We don't know, but... 
you know, yeah. we've got to give it. We've got to give it. That was that's like pinnacle, like gaslighting level of just absolute nonsense, isn't it? Shout really? for Ray, by the way. I, I forgot about that one. I don't believe from it, Ray yeah. in the comments. Um, I completely forgot about that I, one. I, I'd heads. forgotten about that one as well. I'd forgotten about yeah. that one. Um, Forest in the League Cup any, for those listening. Any other guesses? What's on my list? We can discuss this and pick a top five after. I, Unana. I, yeah, Nana. Yeah, for me, first game of the season this season. Clattering. That is on my list. On there, I think. That oh, great shout out, WFC Jonah. Um, I think that's probably on the list. Jean Martinho, the uh, hitting his back, thinking... That is on uh, my list. That is... I was um, at that game, I remember, and it was at the opposite end of the pitch to us. Um, Martinho puts his arm up. Yeah, fair enough. You see it hits him. You think, you know, from this far away, okay, it looked like handball. I'm sure they'll get that right. So VAR looked at the images, said, well, we haven't got an image of it hitting his arm. But we'll assume that it did. <laughs> That's literally what happened. It didn't hit his arm, but they said, well, we'll just assume that it did, even though the images contradict, you know, what the call by the ref was. That's just, that's up there as well. It's just horrendous. horrendous. Was it the one where Jota, was this a Liverpool away again? Where Jota scored a goal, but he come back from a corner and is literally two millimetres of his boot I, might Neto. have been offside. Yeah. That was Neto. I think it was, was, it was, that, yeah. Yeah. was was that the one I remember it, that that was an occasion one where I didn't know the rules myself where we got called out for an offside of a backwards pass in the builder. Do you remember that? I, I think that oh that was um, Southampton at home oh, was, was it, it? Okay. Southampton or Leicester? Oh. I remember that Bolly wasn't it? Yeah, he got stood was offside. Remember. Yeah, but yeah, that was, was a bad one. We had a few bad offside ones. Yeah, Let me yeah, the upside 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 right. I can live with, but some of these here just seem like like corruption. So the four I'd written down that they've came up now. So the Man City Matinho handball, the Liverpool mm. offside in the cup, the West Ham the weekend just gone, and Man U the first game of this season. The, the other two man. I put down, the other two that I put down were um, Nick Pope on Jimenez at Newcastle. Oh yeah, when we never got oh, yeah. on, and it was like a Bloody salt. Hell. It was just ridiculous. Yeah. And the, this this season as well, the Fulham player who had Butty Kilman, and yes. they just waved it off. I was like, "That's another." You forgot the biggest one, Jack. L- L- Lamina approaching the referee aggressively, getting a second. Was that VAR yeah. call yeah. though? Was that a VAR call? That was a red oh, call, I think. They didn't have a rule though. Yeah, true. Well, I think it's, it's a second yellow. It's a second I'm yellow. So I thought of that. These, didn't put it down. Uh, I'm going to go through some of the comments that we've had uh, coming Ooh. in. Uh, Bob, George Bob says, stop good. Going down. Um, so James so says, I think the call on the damage shirt against Leeds when the ref overturned a VAR call was the most amazing of all. Only against Wolves do refs ignore VAR in our favour. Um, Somerset yeah. Wolf says, Kilman being headbutted. Uh, Ray yeah. says, yeah. Luton yeah. away. Steve says, Pogba over the ball and shredded Neves um, before Man United scored, not given. Um, Ian says, Bolly handball at the King Power the first weekend VAR came in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sam, because it started I, rang, I rang Robbie Savage and went nuts, if you remember. <laughs> I've got a video on my YouTube channel of that. That was the first time that VAR really pissed me off. The Gomez one against Luton away, I forgot about that, when it flung up off his leg onto his arm. Oh. Then we got, yeah. And then they, we played Sheffield United a few weeks later. They had the exact same thing and they didn't give a penalty. Yeah, so like, they, they like, contradicted the themselves. Yeah. yeah, they changed the rule like, a few weeks later. <laughs> Do you know what I want to put in there? I want to put one in there, which no one's mentioned yet in the comments or anywhere. The Coventry handball in the FA Cup, the first goal. I've not he watched clearly it back, handballed it. <laughs> yeah, he clearly handballed it into the net. They checked it for about five minutes. I thought, nah, sod it. We can't be bothered. We'll let them have the one nil. But I'll be honest, because it took so long. I was like, go on, just let them have it. Huang penalty versus Newcastle. Yeah, we haven't mentioned that one. Well, I did earlier, actually. Sorry. Similar to Fabio Silva's. God, there's so many. There's so the Rao one against like, Newcastle, Jack. Theme. The Rao one against Newcastle. I forgot about that. That was horrendous. So how they didn't know all that. There's about you, 20 in there. Have we <laughs> mentioned Huang's this season, the penalty that he gave away that was just... Yeah, yeah, Newcastle. That would be Newcastle. The yeah, uh, owners have mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. There's been loads this year. There's been so many and this Unana, year. Unana did the same at home as well at Molyneux in the four three loss. He did the exact yeah. same thing, cleaned yeah, out one of yeah, our players. Did, yeah. And they didn't yeah. give it. So we've had that twice. Oh, there's so many. Yeah. Man. The offsides so, have had we've I've lost count of the offsides. The, the funny thing that when I just started writing these down, I thought, right, I think these are the worst four. Three of those four are against big six clubs. So there's a Man City, there's a Liverpool, there's a Man United. Yeah. The other one I think West Ham just gone. Like <clears throat> the Fulham yeah. headbutt was bad this year, the three two loss away. And the penalty they gave for Fulham against Kearney, you remember, when he dived and like brought it. Yeah. 
did a bit like Isaka did against Arsenal, who had two in that game. Um, and that was against Fulham. Yeah, the Forest one in the League Cup, Neves, when he got his boot ripped off his foot and they didn't check it and they didn't give a penalty. So we've had it against all teams, really. Harry, you are a little bit like a turkey asking for Christmas because it's literally most of our content. <laughs> I'd rather <laughs> we, we talk about a couple more points, to be honest. It's like um, there, there's so many that you actually, I couldn't remember all those until they came up from you guys or came up in the comments. And that's that's how bad it is. It's not just like a one off, oh, they got it wrong. Like in the old days before VAR, you'd have probably two really bad decisions a season, mm. which haunt you for a few weeks. And we've had about 22 this season. So. Well, let's, well let, let, me, let me just go through that. So VAR failed to give water penalty Manchester United in August, lose 1-0. Uh, VAR fails to overturn a penalty against Luton, 1-1 draw September. Uh, VAR fails to overturn a penalty in Wolves 2-2 draw with Newcastle in October. Uh, fails to overturn a penalty in Sheffield United to Wolves 1, November 2023. Um, failing to overturn a penalty for the Fulham game, November 2023. Um, failing to show Vinicius uh, in the Fulham 3-2 loss, November 2023, and then Max Kilman's non-goal against West Ham in April. So that's that's this season. There's, there's seven that you can reel off. Commentary mm. handball, eight. And the commentary handball, there you yeah. go. Pick up. Well, there was one I was going to mention uh, last season under Lopetegui. I think someone did mention it earlier briefly. But when they scored their third leads to go 3-2 up in that game, that was horrendous. Someone oh, like that's... yanked Traore back. Like yanked his arm back and like Traore just stopped. She's like, Well, that's a foul. They carried on, scored, they checked it and they still didn't give it. I remember Molyneux went absolutely yeah. nuts on that one. That was a bit like the same sort of scenes as re, like, uh, the Kilman one. Yeah. But James, that, uh, now we're going through, we've had so many. That James comment, the, the comment, man. I forgot it, about that completely. But James, that was a, is, it, James yeah. is the winner. I think the encroachment in the area when Jimenez missed the penalty against Sevilla in the quarter final of the Europa League and the defender that encroached cleared it. Uh, yeah, in I that think same that, season, that, Man United, that moment, Man City, that Man City moment two well. penalties yeah. for encroachment against them. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah, and we did win that game, but um, yeah. Take I can only think, I can only think of when we played Burnley recently, when Eight Nori got fouled for our goal that we equalised with. I don't think that was a foul. But apart from that, we have we had any go for us that were absolute howlers, like that you know that we've gained advantage from. I can't the maybe the West Ham one. You just don't remember the them West... as much, do you? Yeah, uh, you only remember um... the one to go against. Yeah, we haven't we haven't had like absolute horrendous ones go for us. Though, do you know what I mean? Like the offside one the weekend, or the mm-hmm. Onana one, or anything like that. We've never had one that bad go for us. Blaring. I've never walked away from a game I don't think and gone, oh yeah, no, we really got away with one there. I don't, I, did, I can't recall a. Well, because maybe we that's what this game, you know, we, we talk about the games in their entirety. We always talk about VAR. We talk about how how wrong done we are by VAR. You'd think there would be a time where it sticks out in the head, and we go, oh, "Actually, I remember when that was." Yeah, that I think I think that's out. why. Obviously, all fans are against VAR, but even like outside fans, even they go, "Bloody hell, Wolves! What's the agenda against Wolves?" Like Paddy Power made that joke about it, didn't they? Yeah. So we have, unfortunately. I think it's just down to bad luck, obviously, but we have unfortunately had the most go Mark against Gold, us, especially that run at the beginning of the season. Gold, yeah, yeah, that I mean, that the eight walls as well. So yeah. at the beginning of this season, that run we had was terrible. So yeah, we could be ten points better off if VAR oh. didn't exist or they were better at their job. Incredible. Um, right, okay, let's move on. Eventually, <laughs> I think a little bit of a therapy. Hold on. What's the worst one, Sam? We can't move on. We haven't even done the top five. What's the worst oh. one? What's the worst one? Yeah. And what was the top I five? I think it's the weekend. But f- I think so. For, no, for me, the worst one is the Liverpool one in the cup. Yeah, sorry. Because right? yeah. it's, it's, it's the just weekend. like, oh, yeah, sorry. It, it, yeah, it's not working. So we'll just uh, assume it's offside. <laughs> it's basically yeah. Number happened. three, I'd go with Onana, number three. The 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 uh, UFC fl- flying body check rugby tackle. Um, four, maybe Lamina. I know it weren't VAR, but the Lamina aggressive running. Because we've never seen that again since. I- I think the, the, the Matinho handball has got to be there because it didn't yeah, hit his, yeah. his arm <laughs> and they still gave it. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, this, uh, yeah, top four that I do. So many. We could make a top 20. Uh, let's move on to Forest away. Um, Harry, do you think there'll be any changes uh, to the side? I mean, uh, Eight Nori obviously came off injured rather than being a, a tactical change against West Ham, but we, we hope to God that he will be back. And obviously some minutes for Cunha as well, which is really important because I think that changed the dynamic completely. 
I personally thought Cunha struggled when he came on against West Ham. I thought he was poor. Um, I th- he gave the ball away at one point. I can't remember if it was the build-up to the handball or the build-up yeah, to... Was, yeah. yeah, he was poor. Uh, but obviously, I want Cunha to start, even though I've just slagged him off. But I think I think uh, Doc deserves dropping. I thought he was really poor second half. He was involved in a lot of the calamities. So for me, I'd go with the 5-2-3. I'd have Hugo Bueno left back, which is, I'm saying through gritted teeth because I thought he was rubbish at Burnley. I think that's why Doc started against um, West Ham. I'd have Dawson back in, in the heart of the defence. Totti and obviously Kilman either side with Samada right wing back. Lamina Gomez midfield and I'd have Sarabia, Cunha and hopefully if Aitnor is fit, I'd have Aitnor up there because... I would have him there forever now. I think we should get rid of him as a left wing back and have him more as an attacker because I think he's absolutely brilliant <laughs> up there. So that oh, would yeah. be my team. I mean, if Huang, Huang might be on the bench, but he won't be fit enough, will he? And hopefully yeah, hopefully Dawson's fit enough. We've missed Dawson, I think. Um, Bayliss, any any of the changes? Obviously, Dawson was back on the bench, didn't make an appearance against West Ham, uh, obviously his former side. Uh, I think he does shore things up a lot and just want to know what you think of that. Well, it's a bit of a tough one. I'm not sure who's 100% fit and not. So it's <clears throat> obviously you go as strong as you can. I think Cunha's got to start. And we don't know how knock, it's serious that knock for Dave Nori was, do we? That's still an unknown. No, I, I think they said they said it was an impact injury and you should be okay. I think they said, yeah, okay. it was just a, yeah, it wasn't anything too serious. They only completely out to Belgard and Neto and then the, and Huang is a doubt, I think, I, is the I, general consensus. I think you've got to go with. Eight Nori, Sarabia, and Cunha up top, and the rest slot in where they can. Uh, Willie Bolly is a doubt for uh, Forest, which is good because obviously former players always score against us. Um, Jack, obviously, the big thing that we haven't really touched on yet is it's a game against Nuno. We've only played against him once. Uh, he won that game, his first game for Tottenham, and then was sacked about five minutes later. Um, what sort of reception do you think? he will get, given it's a little bit of needle there, definitely over the last couple of years with Forrest. Yeah, just because it's the the Morgan Gibbs White derby is basically Mm -hmm. what it is now, isn't it? So it's a lot of uh, of Twitter spats and obviously playing them in that uh, that League Cup game and the fingers in the ears and all that nonsense. Um, But, you know, I'm not going to boo Nuno. I'm going on Saturday, so he's down, and that's the last thing I'd do. I think that would be very disrespectful. Um, Gibbs White, on the other hand, he's fair game. So, yeah, every time he touches the ball, uh, it's fine. (laughs) Um, But, um, um, yeah, it's it's a tasty one. They they must be like on a bit of a roller coaster, really, their fans, because all this nonsense that keeps going on with points deductions and then not points deductions and then another points deduction and then they've had a points deduction and it's just Mm -hmm. the way they've handled those this year has just been a shambles for everybody like I feel bad for teams like Luton because they just they can't plan accordingly because they don't know how many points they've got to get each each uh each time to you know go back up a place or down a place it's uh it's it's been a mess um but they'll be looking at this thinking this is a game that they need to get something from Forest, really, and a, a win will really help them on their quest for survival. Um, and on paper, with the problems we've had lately, with you know, be having a small squad, they they'll fancy it, they'll fancy it. But at the very least, I'd like us to start the same team that started the game um, on um, what's was Martin about Harry <laughs> started the game on Saturday. Sam, but... Jeff Bayless, just don't say it. Bailey's just got something in the private chat. Do not say that for fuck's sake. Okay. So I, I would, what I would like is at the very least, I'd like to see Dawson back if he's ready, because I agree, he shores up our defence massively. But apart from that, I just want to see 11 senior players start, really. That's it. Because it, I think it made a massive difference in the first half, particularly against West Ham. Yeah. Um, Harry, Forrester without a clean sheet in the last eight games across all competitions, but have scored at least once in the last four. Uh, we've conceded in our last six matches in all competitions and scored in four of our last five. Give us a score prediction. Um, I, I, what, I will, what I will predict is Gibbs White will score in this game. He just will. Um, I think our season's over anyway, but I think because it's like us against the world again after the weekend just gone. I'm going to say 3-1 Wolves. Why not? 3-1 one one Wolves. Incredible. Uh, Jack? You've accused me all of being very negative lately. You're and very negative. If you listen to last correct. week's podcast, if you, if you listen you to last week's on. podcast, I said, we'll lose 2-1 to West Ham, but we'll put up a decent fight. Definitely happened. That was spot on. But I've got a good feeling about this one as well. 
I, I you know, I think every people are coming back. There's going to be a bit of a spark there and a bit of a, you know, uh, like you say, a bit of anger towards what happened last week. And I think we'll win 2-1. Oh, excellent. Five of the last 11 meetings between these two sides in all competitions have ended in a 1-1 draw, including the last three. Are we going to break the duck and see a winner? Um, let's find out um, from Bayliss. He has some bets. I do have some bets. I also haven't done a prediction. So whilst I'm getting the bets up, I am not as optimistic. I think we're going to lose 1-0 and you know who's going to score it. Um, some came to me with a... <laughs> might as well um, I'll start with a negative one and I'll do some positive ones I think 1-0 Forest Gibbs White is just could could be written all over it 55-1 to one. Ooh. Um, a couple of then slightly more interesting ones 3-2 Wolves Cunha first goal 120-1 to one. oh I like that and a 2-0 Wolves Lamina first goal because he has, does get the odd one 170 to 1. There's a lot of value for Wolves. Um, There's a lot Sam of value. Came up. Yeah, go on. Sam, you gave me an interesting sort of bet builder. You did. Wolves to win 2 1 and Gibbs White to commit four or more fouls in the game. 180 to 1. I quite Lovely. like that. Lovely. Let's mm-hmm. go straight on that. Although my betting recently has been absolutely atrocious. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I got the boost the other day. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this. Eight Nori, two shots on target, 6 to 1. I was like, easy money. No, no shots on target. Um, but there you go. It's it, just one of those days. Um, just a few um, rumours to go through. Uh, start with you, Harry. Um, weirdly today, Pedro Neto has been linked with Man City. I mean, do you think there's any legs in that? I should know if he's got legs, that's they won't sign him. Well, he he hasn't. That's why he's, that's why he's <laughs> exactly. been on the bench half the season. No, um, I think that's bullshit, to be honest. And Saudi Arabia as well was the other one. So. Yeah, I, I just don't know. I, is it he might be back for the last two games? Which I think we've got City in the one of the last three games, isn't it? We've got a really hard last three games, haven't we? Which is probably why our season's over, to be honest. Yeah, uh, oh, I don't know. Because I think, I think I got cramped then, talking of injuries. Um, <laughs> I think, no. I don't think he's going to go. I don't, because he's injured. I don't, just don't. I think he might go in January, maybe, if he has a good start to the season. If he can... Jack. Keep the hamstrings intact. I, I think, yeah, it's too much of a risk now. I think I've said before in recent weeks that the 80, 90 million being quoted for a player that was long term injured last season and pulled up twice this season. Um, yeah, I can't see it. I mean, this, I think the Saudi one is more likely than City, to be honest, just because, you, you know, the money involved and you won't have to sprint as much, really. <laughs> it won't be as bad. Um, but I, I also do agree that I think our season is over now. Like, I think we needed four points from Burnley and West Ham. And at half time on Saturday, I thought we were going to get them. And, you know, just just that, you know, not at least getting a point from that West Ham game, I think has killed it, which is a shame. But, you know, you never know. But let's just see what happens on Saturday and then we'll reassess. Do you know, sorry, what we haven't mentioned, Sam, we haven't mentioned what Jeff She said after the game. I know it's completely out of sync, but it's a massive thing we've missed. <laughs> Um, it was surprising to see him come out after the West Ham game, wasn't it? With his statement. Yeah, so he he questioned the role of of VAR, um, and obviously I, I think he said it's time to question if someone remote disallowing that goal is what football wants or needs. But obviously we we, mm. we have covered quite a lot of. Um, but I just want to yeah. say about that with how everyone's like, I'd say about eighty percent of the eighty percent of the fan base are a bit annoyed with Jeff and Foson. I kind of thought it was weird timing because everyone was venting and wanted to take their anger out on someone. And as soon as that post came out, the replies and that, everyone was just like, tweet oh, replies. Off, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> piss off, yeah. But if you actually read what he said, it's actually, he actually like, Jack, like Sam just said, he speaks a lot of sense in what he's saying. It's just like, I think Jeff was loving it because I think it distracts from the fact that he's let us down by not giving Gary O'Neill that striker he promised. So big thing though, in coming out, because he's been quiet for how long? We haven't heard from him since the beginning of the season. And all of a sudden, he pops up with a little statement. I know he does that bizarre column for the Express and Star, but he just talks about football manager and the time he went for a green lager in bloody Gloucester about four years ago. So, yeah, all that was bizarre that he came out with that. Oh, green lager. Um, <laughs> uh, another one today, Dan. Uh, João Gomez linked with Arsenal and Manchester United. Think there's legs in that? Fish right now. so. Fish wrapping. Oh. I, th- I think there's more chance of that than the never the the netto one, not nevers. There is more chance um, of it, but at this stage of the season, they're just trying to prep themselves to be like, oh, we said this back in so and so, and they'll get one out of three hundred right. Mm. 
Now, Harry just finally, scrum, and, right? and, and, and Ansu Fati, I think, is going to be going back from Brighton back to Barcelona. Um, he's been linked with uh, a couple of clubs in Spain, but also Wolves as well. Mm. He hasn't Strike, done much of Brighton. How many really? goals? Bring him in. We, we, weren't we linked with him before? But then no, he was kind of like, we ain't definitely ain't going to get him. Then he's gone to, he hasn't like set the world alight, has he? No. And if he's a fatty, he's got to lose some weight. So once he's lost his weight, he can come back. <laughs> Takes one to no one. Uh, the only exercise Harry gets is jumping to conclusions. <laughs> Uh, right, okay, we will end that there. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the uh, the therapy VIR session as much as we have. Uh, we'll say goodbye to Harry Manson. Yeah, sorry for the start of us not being able to go live and everything crashing and probably a bit of a car crash episode, but thanks for listening. Cheers. <laughs> not at all, never. Uh, it's goodbye from Dan Bayliss. Yep, see you on Saturday if you're going. James says fatty shaming. And it's goodbye from Jack Williams. <laughs> Very good. Yep, see you all Saturday, Tara. And it's a goodbye from me.